Jack did well and got her to admit, got Nicola Willis to admit to the decisions that they're making are a choice. So let's have a listen to uh, to this conversation. And this is about, from memory, um, I think they call it fiscal drag. Like, even if you have a tax cut, that only brings it up to a couple of years beyond when the last tax cut was. So to actually get it current, to be fair today as it was in 2010 sort of thing, there's the thing called fiscal drag. And so Jack's like kind of going, having the conversation around, why, is, why are you not bringing that drag right the way to today? Like, mm. let's say it's been 14 years. So you've come forward about five years. What about getting it up to current day? If you're going to do this, why aren't you doing it properly? That's that's a bad summary of the conversation, but that's what they're talking about. But, but if you feel so strongly about um, the injustice of not having adjusted tax brackets, will you as finance minister commit to automatically indexing, indexing tax brackets? No. Why not? Because that's not the policy of the coalition government. Why not? Because but you, you believe in that, that it's been unfair that we've had we've allowed that fiscal drag, so why not? Have automatic indexing. We didn't campaign on that. What we campaigned on was making we campaign on a bunch of stuff. This is really important, right? And the, the reason I really wanted to play this is my my main clip to play is that they're saying they're saying because we didn't campaign on it, we're gonna not gonna do it. Now, Chewy, I know that your point is you also didn't campaign on Spoke Free twenty twenty five example, example, example. But what they're actively telling us now is we're not going to do what's best for the country. We're only going to do what was talked about. Now. Then, of course, they do the opposite because they do what's not talked about, Smoke Free 2025. But it's like getting the answer wrong both ways. You didn't campaign on Smoke Free 2025, but you did it. You did campaign on adjusting it. Why didn't you make it exact? Because we didn't, we didn't, we didn't campaign on changing it all the way through. Um, but what they're starting to do, and I said this to Chippy, is they're starting to talk about we made choices. Uh, Chris Bishop did it last week. And now what we need to do is re remind them of what their choices are but they're starting to say it. Year of mm. office, and we've done that. I know what you we campaigned also, on, so, but, but as finance minister, what, what, what's the problem with that idea? Well, it's important that I deliver on my commitment to get the books back I understand you. I understand what commitment is. It is important that I do but that. I'm under, I, I, I want to know what your philosophy is as, as finance minister. Why would that be a bad idea? Well, my philosophy is to get the books back in balance, to reduce the amount of government spending mm. as a proportion of the overall economy, to get that debt tracking down and to tax people fairly. Yes, and if we grow this economy faster, <laughs> which is the goal of all of our policies, yeah. then we should be a wealthier country that can continue to adjust tax brackets. But I so, first need so to you do don't, the you things don't have we were elected to You don't do. have a position on indexing tax brackets, is, is what you're telling me now. Well, but just a moment ago, you said no. Well, as the finance minister, Jack, I am. my position is the government's position, mm. and the government's position is that we are not indexing tax brackets. Mm. Why not? Because it's not been our policy. And why is it not your policy? Because New Zealand can't afford it right now. Ah. And the truth shall set you free. Mm. And why can't you afford it right now, Nicola? Why can't you afford it? Does it have anything to do with $3 billion going back to landlords and $14 billion with the tax cuts? And that's the message. Would $3 billion help? Probably. It'd help if a I lot just, of things. I felt $3 billion on the back of my couch and I handed it to Nicola Willis. Would they do it? Would they Would they, fu would they fund the, the cancer uh, treatments? Yeah. The truth will set you free. She said it. We can't afford it. Why can't you afford it? Because of landlords. Because of tax cuts. Although they're talking about a tax cut, so they can't afford it because of tax cut. But landlords is fair, the interest uh, deductibility. Um, yeah, Chewie, you can jump in there while I try and find another clip. You got anything else to say? Um, no, there's so there's so much about this Q and A. Look, I, I'm just going to tell people just you know don't rely on just our highlights of this interview. The whole thing is a bloodbath. Yeah. Um, there, there's yep. just so much. I was shouting at the TV a lot. The obvious question that we've been asking before the budget and since the budget was, if you weren't giving tax cuts, would you need to be borrowing for the groceries, as she keeps saying? All things being equal, if every other revenue and spending line in the budget remained the same, but you didn't introduce tax cuts, would you require more or less borrowing? 
Uh, the borrowing would be the same because our tax reduction package has been fully offset with savings from elsewhere. That is money that mm. would otherwise have been sent, spent and it's been delivered in the context of a smaller operating allowance, which mm. is to say the overall position of what the government is requiring is lower than it would otherwise so, be. So hang on, so everything else remains the same? So all of the savings you remain, remain the same, your reprioritizations, all of that stuff remains the same, but you don't introduce the tax <laughs> so, cuts. And what hypothetical land are you living? Because no, I don't is, think a single party is, in Parliament said we're going to do the savings that National mm. is doing just for the sake of doing them. And in fact, for Labor to claim that now, They're not, while I, I, also I, I, saying that we shouldn't be uh, reducing mm. the amount of funding being spent on public agencies, we shouldn't be reprioritising mm. uh, the amount of money spent on emergency housing, we shouldn't be stopping three waters. All of those decisions we've taken have helped us fund tax well, relief. Well, I, well, what hypothetical world are you living in if you think that you can't, all things being equal, b borrow any more money if you take $10 billion of revenue out of your budget. Well, we've done. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much the start of the conversation. And then they go backwards and forth. I'm not doing that. Well, you are. Well, I'm not doing that. Well, you are doing that. So, yeah, it's um, it's such an easy question to ask. Remember, we demonstrated it last week by saying, imagine that the government, the government money was under one bank account number, right? But under that bank account number, there was all the suffixes. There was the win suffix, and there was the health suffix. It was 01. And there was the um, interest deductibility suffix, and there was the education suffix. So all different suffixes under that one account. And if you put all of it into this one for interest deductibility, and that reduces it from all the other ones, so they have nothing left in them, then you have to borrow in the other ones to allow that $3 billion to be in the interest deductibility one. So it's just a nonsense. What, what's It's almost fascinating, Chewy, that they think they can get away with saying we're not borrowing for tax cuts. Or, as Jack did quite well then, we're not borrowing, he basically said, because of the tax cuts. In other words, if all things were equal, equal uh, but yeah. you weren't doing the tax cuts, would you need to borrow as much? Fine. And she still was like, "Ma, it's an imaginary world we live in." Mm. So it's it's they just refuse to answer it. It's a crazy world, but hypotheticals yeah. can never exist. Yeah, well, it'd be good to remember that for the next election. We're not allowed to talk about mm. hypotheticals. So yeah, it was an interesting one, that's for sure. Um, let me see. Oh, okay, we should do this. Six thirty-two. Maybe this will be the last one. Actually, there's, there's actually lots of them because we've been talking about this tonight. Uh, Q&A in the weekend, uh, of course, the conversation of cancer drugs came up. In the future, during the election campaign, National promised to fund 13 cancer drugs. What New Zealanders were set to benefit from that funding? Uh, there were about 1,000 New Zealanders who were set to benefit from that, and I want them to hear this message today, Jack. We will meet our commitment to you. We understand how important it is to those patients, to their family. Even if it's three months after you die, it'll be there just a bit late. Families to their loved ones, and we are going to meet that commitment. When? With urgency, uh, I expect <laughs> we will be in a position to make an announcement very soon this year. Very soon? Yes. Why haven't you made it yet? As I've said, when we came into office, we inherited some fiscal bombs that we were not expecting. Mm. One of them was the shortfall in funding for Pharmac, the medicine purchasing agency. That shortfall, we knew there was a small shortfall there. We campaigned on fixing it, but it was far larger than we had been led to believe. How large, how large was it, Nicola? Was it more than $2.9 billion? Because if it was more than $2.9 billion, I can't say, but you gave $2.9 billion to the landlords, or was it less than that? That meant we had to find $1.8 billion uh, just to sustain access to life-saving medicines. So if we sustain it at $1.8 billion and we add the other $270 million in for the cancer drugs, that's just over $2 billion. Chewy, can you remind me, how much do they give back to landlords? I can't remember. So many billion. Wait, Was it like $8.50? $8. No, mm. it's considerably north of that, I think. Okay. All right, I mean, I, you know, I've forgotten already. We made that decision. The next step for us is to make sure we have a policy to purchase those additional cancer mm. medicines. We are working on that in real time. I've spoken with David Seymour and Dr. Shane Retty in recent days, and they are confident we are going to come up with a fix very soon. So the um, interesting thing that Chippy said, he actually said it on the news tonight as well, and he repeated it with us, to say out loud, these are the drugs we're going to fund, 
how does that not then put you behind the eight ball when it comes to negotiating those prices? Like if someone said to us, we're going to sponsor BHN no matter what choice, Which you should. million it's a million you dollars should. a year. You know what I mean? Like, doesn't that show your hand from the man who's going to sell his business credentials as the reason he's a good prime minister? He, he, they name them. So what, what, what's stopping those companies now not just putting a zero on because they name mm. them. It's, it's a very, very interesting perspective from uh, Mr. Hipkins. Are we going to sit here in silence for as long as we can? Is that what we're doing now? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a suicide <laughs> pact at that point. <laughs> dead air, dead air. Um, I think we can, look. There's other stuff to talk about. The two hundred and fifty dollars a fortnight clip was horrifically uncomfortable. Um, or maybe we'll play this one because I put this out on my Twitter feed as well. Did you see this? You're not really on Twitter anymore. Going around about how she uh, talked about. You know, when they were in opposition, how dare the government give three billion dollars to Shane Jones's slush fund whilst they're giving three billion dollars to landlords mm. and giving money to Shane Jones's slush fund? It's pretty interesting. Okay, um, I want to throw you a quote. It's not right the government can find billions for Shane Jones's slush fund, but it can't afford life-saving drugs. Yes, that is a quote from Simon Bridges that I uh, took from his speech at our national conference in 2019. Mm. It's it's on Twitter at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and look, yeah. his yeah, speech at that conference resulted in two things. One, mm. the creation of the Cancer Control Agency. Great initiative. That is the agency that came up with the list of 13 mm. cancer drugs that we're committed. That we're ignoring, that we're not going to do anything about. To funding. The second thing is this. We will be prioritising funding for no, cancer no, drugs. No, 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 that no, no, no. See what she's done? She's not actually she's addressing not the, the, she's not, but they're not, she's not addressing the tweet anymore. She's now gone mm. to talking points about it's coming, it's coming. It is our commitment. We're going to meet it. So but, the Nicola but Willis done, in 2019 is the thing. same Nicola Willis as she is now, yeah. and I continue to believe that. So let's just have a quick look at that tweet for people who don't understand what we're talking about. This is uh, you quoting Simon Bridges in 2019. There we go. So we'll, for people who are in the audio podcast, the tweet, it's not on my Twitter feed if you want to go see it. It's not right that the government can find $3 billion for, I'll, I'll just, I'll do the, 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 the version that she might tweet out this week. It's not right that the government can find $3 billion for landlords, but can't, but it can't afford life-saving drugs. New Zealanders shouldn't have to set up a give a little pages just to stay alive. I mean, could it be any more perfect? Could it be any more perfect? And also on top of giving the $3 billion to landlords, and they are giving money to Shane Jones for his slush fund as well. Chewy. So what do you say? It It, it is spectacular. Um, and look, uh, a shout out to Stampy on Blue Sky who who actually flicked me that uh, on when was it on the thirty first. Uh, so I don't know where that stands and and how how that story broke, but uh, he drew my attention to that on Friday. I sent it immediately to Pat. Pat <laughs> put it up on his socials, and it kind of went from there. But yeah, it, it is it is literally perfect, and there is no better argument than quoting. A politician back to that politician and then go what do you say to that person yeah what do you think yeah, like it's everything's not. the same but now it's you